Good day and welcome to Island Stats Sports. I'm Earl Baston. After three days of qualifying at the 51st Quebec AMF Bowling World Cup, the 156-player field from 88 countries has been trimmed to 24 men and women. Bermuda's David Maycock was the top Caribbean qualifier. Maycock qualified ninth with a total of 5,103 pins at an average of 12.63. Unfortunately, June Dill did not advance as she finished 31st in the ladies' division with 4,478 pins at an average of 186.58. On Monday, we reported Olympian Roy Allen Birch got back in the pool for the first time to compete since his double patella tendon rupture sustained during training. Having had a few days to reflect, Birch is quoted as saying, Getting back on the blocks was huge for me. The combination of thousands of hours of rehab and training led to that moment and it was satisfying to complete. The U.S. Sailing Safety and Sea Committee has awarded the Arthur B. Hansen Rescue Medals to a sailboat's crew for their heroic efforts displayed during the 2014 Newport Bermuda Race, which is hosted by the Cruising Club of America and the Royal Bermuda Yacht Club. Back on June 22, 2014, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the crew of the Taylor 41 One Drain put out a mayday call. The boat had been taking on water with serious hull damage. Three boats responded to the VHS coal, Rocket Science, Black Watch, and Dorad. Black Watch's afterguard, John Melvin, Navigator, Peter Rugg, and Watch Captains, Jamie Cosme, and the CAC member, Lars Forrest, decided that their larger vessel was the best qualified to stand by and escort one drain to Bermuda. Rugg explained later, quote, If the boat had to be rescued and someone else needs to take eight or nine people on board, we should be there. End quote. For the great seamanship exhibited and the willingness to spearhead a stricken vessel to safety, U.S. Sailing awarded the Arthur B. Henson Rescue Medal to the crew of Black Watch. The Arthur B. Henson Rescue Medal is awarded to any person who rescues or endeavors to rescue any other person from drowning, shipwreck, or other perils of the sea within the territory waters of the United States or as part of a sailboat race or voyage that originated or stopped in the U.S. Ten girls entertained the fans at the First Division Doubleheader last evening at the Somerset Cricket Club. In the opener, the Somerset Eagles picked up where they left off on Sunday with a 3-2 win over BAA. Somerset Eagles have now scored nine goals in 180 minutes of action. The first goal of the game came in the second minute when Nathan Rigo scored. BAA would draw a level in the 41st minute when Laquan Thomas found the back of the net. Three minutes later, Somerset Eagles would go back in front when Rigo scored his second goal of the game, making the halftime score 2-1. to one. BAA pulled themselves back level in the 65th minute when Zeon Robinson converted from the penalty spot. But they would play a man down after Mariko Iris received his second yellow card and was sent to the showers. The winner came in the 81st minute when Devin Riley Clark rose highest to head the ball in the back of the net, giving Somerset Eagles the win. In the nightcap, 10 men Paget Lions came up one goal short in their 3 2 loss to the Flanagan's Onions. Paget only had 10 men to choose from due to work commitments and injuries, but they carried on for the 90 minutes. Flanagan's Onions got two goals from Trayson Smith and a single strike from Corey Davies. Paget Lions got a goal from Damon Morris and Couchet Hippolyte. It was a high-scoring night in the Cell One Island Basketball League inside the Cedar Bridge Academy with 257 points scored in a double header. In the opening match, the Flyboys United defeated Skyforce 70-54 to move to a record of 7-2 on the season, while Skyforce now have a record of 2-8. Karen Burgess scored a game-high 26 points to lead the Flyboys United to the victory, while Skyforce were led by Rishon Tankard with 12 points. The second game of the night and the game of the week, it saw the undefeated Twisters take on the defending champions Thundercats and defeat them 71-62 to go to 9-0 on the season, while the loss saw the Thundercats move to 6-3. The league's top scorer, Kevin Stevens, scored a game-high 34 points to lead the Twisters to victory, with Chris Crumpler scoring 30 points 
for the Thundercats. The Bermuda Bowl Hockey League season continued at the PCC Hockey Rink last evening with 16 goals scored in two matches. The opener saw the Tri-City Americans get two first period goals off the stick of Bill McClure as they took a 2-0 lead at the end of the first 20 minutes ahead of the Halifax Mooseheads. Neither team could beat the goalkeepers in the second period as the Tri-City Americans maintained their 2-0 lead with 20 minutes to play. The Halifax Mooseheads would pull within one when Ronnie Duras scored an early goal in the third period. However, Christopher Merritt would restore the Tri-City Americans' two-goal lead when he scored to make the score 3-1. With 17-11 going off the clock in the period, the Halifax Mooseheads would once again pull within one when Ryan Sully scored to make the final two minutes and 49 seconds very intense. However, it would be the Tri-City Americans who would get the final goal of the game with 19-40 gone as Adam Smith scored to make the final score 4-2. In the nightcap, the Gatian Olympics came from behind to defeat the Vancouver Giants 6-4. to The Giants got single goals from Joe Neal and Warren Miller as they took a 2-0 lead at the end of the first period. The Olympics got themselves back into the game in the first minute of the second period when Matt Cash scored. But Vancouver would go back up by their two goals when Mark Waddington would score with 4.30 going off the clock. Seven minutes down and Cash would score again for the Olympics to pull them within one. And then three minutes later, he would complete his hat trick, scoring again to make the score 3-3. The Giants would go ahead 4-3 when Glenn Madour scored. However, this would be their final goal of the game. The Olympics would draw a level yet again with a Jacob Amlum goal. The Olympics got two goals in the third period as they picked up the 6-4 victory. Goals from Grant Bateman and Chad Cunliffe saw them to victory. The International Cricket Council, ICC, announced the details for the annual ICC Development Program Awards for 2015 with the nominations period to open from today. The award categories and winning grants are as follows. For the Best Overall Cricket Development Program, it is $5,000. Lifetime Service Award winner receives $2,000. Volunteer of the Year Award receives $2,000. Best Spirit of Cricket Initiative also receives $2,000. Women's Cricket Behind the Scenes receives $2,000. And the Photo of the Year will receive $2,000. Now back in 2007, the award was won by the Bermuda Cricket Board with a photo taken by islandstats.com. Russia is one of six countries ruled to be in breach of the WADA code. Along with Argentina, Ukraine, Bolivia, Andorra, and Israel, they have been deemed non-compliant by WADA. Belgium, Brazil, France, Greece, Mexico, and Spain have been placed on a watch list and must meet strict conditions by March of 2016 or face similar actions. Meanwhile, Kenya have been ordered to explain its doping control or join those countries under scrutiny. WADA stated if Kenya's answers are unsatisfactory, it could also face sanctions. There are 15 Kenyans banned for doping by the athletics governing body, IAAF. With the world of sports currently being turned upside down with scandals, violence, and drugs, islandstats.com will host a live forum this evening beginning at 6.30. Tune in at 6.30 to hear the panel of well-known Bermuda sports personalities and administrators discuss the global issue and how it pertains to Bermuda. I'm Earl Based, and thank you for joining Island Stats Sports. Do enjoy the rest of your day.